and welcome to Behind the Badge. I know you know me as Chris Vassell. I'm the Public Education Officer for the Scottsdale Police Department. And today, I have a very, very special guest. Um, one that probably made this show possible. He did make this show possible. And one um, that I was really proud to be a co-host with. So, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to my special guest today, Chief Alan Rodbell. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate it. This is, uh, this is the last one I'll be doing. Uh, been, we've been doing this together for the last, uh, well, I've been a police chief for 18 years, so the last 18 years we've been doing this together. Uh, that's a, that, my quick total in my head is about uh, 209 episodes Something of like Behind that. the Badge uh, with the help of some wonderful folks here in the studio. And, uh, and you, you are my producer. You put it all together. You, you brought on some great guests. You surprised me by not telling me who they were until the last minute. <laughs> so I, I couldn't really prepare. <laughs> but uh, but it was, it's been a great experience. I, I'm going to just talk about the first time we did this. And the first time we did this, when you told me I had a TV show and I was announced as a chief, I said, excuse me? You said, we have a TV show. And I said, well, I don't want to do a TV show. And, and, she's, and you said, no, it's important for the community. It's on, it's on the cable. It talks about things going on behind the badge in the organization and even some news of things were going on mm -hmm. you know, in the organization at the time or the community at the time. Correct. And so um, I said, well, if I want to be a TV star, I'd go on to Hollywood. I said, I'm in Scottsdale instead. He says, we're doing this. So I insisted that the first one be scripted. I said, I've never done this before. I want a script. I want to know who my guest is. I want to know questions we're going to ask. I said, I need to be put together. We had the last 28 minutes, I guess, in those days. I said, I want it all yep. written out. Our first guest was a detective lieutenant who was working on, the at the time, the Rock Burglar case. Yes, yes. And we hadn't made the arrest yet on the Rock Correct. Burglar case. And they, he had hit us, and we say he because we found it was a he later. Uh, he had hit us. Uh, 300 times between us and Paradise Valley in cases and they've been going on for years. Mm -hmm. And so my first guest was a detective lieutenant who was in charge of that case. And when he sits down, I've got my script and we're asking questions. I'm getting yes, no, yes. And we did the script in like six minutes. I it know. was done. And you, I can see you <laughs> like sweating. Done. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, he's going to kill me. No, I'm going to strangle <laughs> him actually. I was thinking, I'm coming over the table with this guy. First episode, six minutes, I'm done, put it away. And so we had a dance the rest of that program, oh. the two of us. And I said, you know what, for now on, don't tell me who's coming on. Just make it be a surprise. We'll have a conversation. We do that and we've day. been flying by the seat of our pants ever since. We have. Yeah. It is so funny, so that you say that because um, the rest, I, I came into your office today to told you what I was going to do today, which is a very first since that <laughs> time because I was like, I don't think I want to surprise you today. <laughs> um, but we did fine. And it's like, when, so usually when we're walking up the stairs or something, you're like, who's our guest today? <laughs> I'll be like, oh, it's going to be the motor. It's going to be the, oh, okay, who's coming? And then you walk in and go, oh, hi, how are you? And that's kind of how we do it. And yeah. it's how we've been doing it from the very beginning. So I think if the audience will know anything, Neither chief or I have any problems talking. <laughs> oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> or conversing with each other. Uh -oh. um, and we have saved a lot of our guests that, like, see, we know when their eyes kind of go, like, oh. deer, or, like, and we try to tell them, okay, remember, this is taped. You, we don't do overs. We're not going to oh, edit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the staff here, they will not cut anything out. <laughs> I forgot the name of one of my one of my top staff members, I, a deputy chief. I forgot his name sitting here. I, mean, yeah. I knew it like it was my brother, right? Because he worked day in and day out. I just went blank. And I'm like, uh, uh, I, and he gives me his name. I go, no, that's not it. I was like, it's like, really? I so know. yeah, we're, but and it's we been kinda, a lot of fun. We do kind of have though our own little kind of way of, um, like before you usually get here, if the guests are sitting here, because of course they're always early because they know they're going to be on the show with you. And usually I'll tell them, okay, this is what we're doing. This is how we're going to do it. But when the chief comes in, whatever he tells you, that's what we're going to do. And then usually I'll say, and if he starts to like, you know, like play with your mind, that he's going to ask you all these mathematical questions. Uh, I said, don't worry about oh, it. He's only oh, kidding. You so spoiled that because I, I did. do that to make him even more nervous. I did. That made me look better. I'm confessing. If they're nervous, I look better. I am and, confessing. Oh, because they were afraid of you. <laughs> I walk up and go, I'm going to ask you a math question. And then someone, one, one of them was a mathematician. He goes, great, I know math. I go, okay, I'll ask you a science question. Then. I know. <laughs> yeah, how to build a bookcase or something. I know. Oh, gosh. So, yeah. so you ruined like, it. You ruined it for me. Oh, no. I Jeez. just I just wanted, you know, because I knew they were like, you know, they're like, I'm on the show with the chief. You know, they don't, they don't want to look like an idiot, especially if they want to be promoted. So it's kind of like, you Darn. know. 
But anyways, uh, anyway. I have a few questions oh, for you. Oh, sure. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes, and, and no. this is the first this is the first time that we ever haven't like had a, a pre-conversation where we didn't talk about <laughs> Citizens Academy. Yeah. So yeah. And the first time we've <laughs> sat six feet apart from each other. Yes, it's like, exactly. are you over there? Usually, I put my glasses on, even see usually you. Usually I'm like right like <laughs> <laughs> So this is kind of fun. Uh, All right, so the first question. And I even wrote them down because I knew I was going to be nervous today. Did you write down the answers too? No, I know oh. what your answers are going to be. I've been around you for so long, I kind of know what you're going to answer. You give the answer. I'll just sit here and enjoy myself. Go ahead. No. Okay. Good. So just, you know, I think a lot of the audience really has never heard about your distinguished career and oh. really how long that you have been in law enforcement. <laughs> Can you just put out your sleeve and show them that it runs yeah. like all the way from your, <laughs> your, so your, each one your represents wrist to the top of your... Uh, each one represents four years. But, and, and I'm in pink now. We should mention this. Yeah, that's for, true. You know, the, the department has done uh, for the last two years now a uh, cancer awareness um, uh, pink patch campaign. We've done we've done fundraising for cancer awareness mm -hmm. many many years. Yes. We sold hats with the uh, with the ribbons on it, and we raised funds through I guess through other w events as well to support uh, cancer awareness and right. cancer treatment. And so two years ago, one of our employees who actually has been on the show yes, created the Michael. pink patch. Michael Michael Kaur created the pink patch. Uh, peak <laughs> I tried one time fast. Pink. Then I got cut that out either. <laughs> the pink patch campaign yeah. and and. Uh, Michael's been raising funds, and this year, as a result of the pink patch and the chevrons, you'll see, and we we're running it through November of this year. Uh, Michael raised over, I think, over five thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah, like they, weighed, uh, they raised like five hundred dollars more than last year. Yes. And we should tell that the officers buy the patches yes. to put on their sh uniforms, um, so that um, they can wear them yes. on their uniform during the. That's right. why, if you see a pink patch, that's why. Yeah, and 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 the charity is, you know, don't be a chump, check for a lump, and and I and I say that don't because uh, quite frankly. Frankly, it's all about prevention. And we've had some employees, and even yes. male employees, who have suffered uh, from, from breast cancer. So we it's lost, a very serious we event. Lo we lost an officer Yes, to yes, breast yes. Cancer. Julie, a number of years yes, ago. Julie. Yes, Julie. She's in our museum. So it's very sad and it's very important. But um, so. So we were going with a question. Back to the question. Oh, um, how old am I? What? Just tell us a little bit about your background sure. because I don't think a lot of people know. You've been in Scottsdale for how many years now? So, so okay, so the answer to that question is 19. So I started law enforcement back in 1976 uh, in Montgomery County, Maryland. And uh, it's outside the District of Columbia, and that's where I grew up. And so I was a police officer there for 26 years and then came here right after 9-11. And so I, raised, I rose to the ranks in Montgomery County from police officer on the street all the way up to deputy chief of police there. And then when I came here, I came here as a deputy chief of police. It was more of a lateral transfer. Mm -hmm. And um, I was teaching online education and in the well, classroom. That's your right? And that my background's education. Yes, and so, and my wife saw that I was leaving the Montgomery County and said, you know, you need to find another law enforcement job. You're just going to miss it too much. So she gave me permission to look for another job. Uh, and I looked for in a magazine, and there was Scottsdale, Arizona advertising. And I applied for Scottsdale, and I was very, very fortunate to get that. My wife and I had vacationed out here when we were kids, and we loved the area. And so to move to start a new career in an area where you actually loved being on vacation mm -hmm. was like a dream come true for us. And, yeah. and so I was a deputy chief for about a year, and I was given the opportunity to be the chief after that first year. And so for 18 years, I've been the chief. That's awesome. So total years of law enforcement? 45. 45. Yeah. 45, yeah. And Long you still time. don't look a day older than you did when yeah. you started, right? It's a, it's a special lens we're using here. <laughs> no, the, the special <laughs> lens doesn't work. Trust me, I, I already know. All uh, right, second question. Yes. Um, in your 19 years uh, for your career in Scottsdale, um, what do you think changed the most at the PD and within the city, actually? Well, there's been a lot of changes, but, the, but you know, I'm... I talk about this all the time. I'm, I'm into evolution, not revolution. And so the evolution for where we were 19 years ago as a police department to where we are today uh, has, has been just tremendous. And, and so much that is, is because of our community, because, of our, because our community demands excellence, because of the people we hire, and because of our leadership in government. And our partnership throughout all of city with all city employees, we were just fabulous people. So, so I, you know, it's been about evolution from a department that was evolving from some a department that was pretty much still maybe perhaps a little small town within itself, 
to an organization, quite frankly, that I'm very proud to say I think is a national leader and maybe an international leader in law enforcement. You know, we set the bar, and we've been setting the bar for a while. We've, we've had people come in and assess our organization, and when they come away, they go, wow, we've never seen a place like this. We, we, we're an accredited agency, so every year now, it used to be every four years, but every right. year now the process, some part of reaccreditation occurs, and every year our assessors come away going, wow, this place is amazing. And it's because of all those ver all those people, uh, and, all, and all those all those uh, requirements to be the best by our community, and to make sure we serve people as, as the best a police department can serve the public. And it's just been it's been a real proud experience for me to watch this occur. Well, and definitely I know um, that in that last 19 years, you know our um, growth. Um, yes. As far as, I mean, even though like the north end of the city, pretty much past Pinnacle Peak has just exploded. Yes. And um, now another challenge that you faced as the police chief was the explosion of growth downtown. Yes. And as we were growing out, as you've known in 19 years, we're not growing up. Yes which uh, poses so many different uh, challenges uh, for policing, yet for the city and services and things like that. Um, and it's interesting, I don't know if everybody has really knows this or not, but we have only, and I, I think, I know I've said it many times, um, but we only had six police chiefs to ever serve in Scottsdale, and you are the number six. Um, so. It's not like Phoenix or some of these other agencies that have been around since the 1900s. I mean, we right. were here. Um, we had a deputy marshal's office, and um, Chief Nemitz in 1963 was the first police chief from L.A. Mm -hmm. came to Scottsdale, and they turned it from deputy deputy marshals to the city of Scottsdale. Mm -hmm. So. You're only one of six. Yeah. I've worked for five of the six, but <laughs> and now probably the seventh. Um, but anyway, um, I think that is such an amazing thing. Yeah. And I also can say with very much certainty, police chiefs don't usually last 19 years, chief. And I know you're not leaving um, because you do not like or you've changed your mind about policing. I know you are such a dedicated person to policing and believe it, you know, in and out. But you got another opportunity. So I wanted to give you a chance to tell the audience why, you know, that you are departing yeah. now. So I, I appreciate that. I will tell you that there is, you know, and I say jokingly, that a police chief could drop dead at his desk and they're carting him out. The news will say, why is he really leaving? I mean, that's just the reality of being a police chief. There's always got to be a reason why they're leaving. I've been doing this for 45 years, and I love it so much. And I love my police department so much. And I love our community so much that I didn't know how to leave. And I just saw myself, you know, not knowing how to walk away from something you love doing. and been doing it top. your whole life. Mm -hmm. and, and we're doing really great as a city and as a police department. Mm -hmm. So, and, and we have some new leadership coming into mayor and council, and it'll, it'll be great for the city. So. The, and not that oh it's bad I don't want to go there but the fact is it's evolution it's change, change but it's exciting change mm -hmm. and we're going to see exciting change in the police department because we're going to see people getting promoted as a result of a number yeah, of us leaving at the end of the year a whole new generation so many people leaving on top and, and and I regret not being here to help mold that but you want to leave with regret you don't want to leave a you want to do something your whole life whole adult life and then walk away bitter angry burned out tired you want to walk away feeling really really good about it and so when I got an offer from somebody that wasn't asking for anything, right, when I got an offer, I had to give it some serious thought and I had to go home and talk to my wife and say, you know, maybe this is the way you walk away. You walk away on top, you some walk away loving it, exactly. and you walk away missing it. Well, and the thing is, is sometimes um, things are meant to be, mm. you know, and like, you know, opportunities that come, like you, you've got a great opportunity in the business sector, and you're going to be bringing your, you know, 45 years of experience to a, a business sector, sector that's going to need some of that organizational, uh, military, military style um, uh, skills and talent. Um, and so it's all your... Um, experience and uh, will be put toward this new event adventure yeah. that you're going Thank on you. I appreciate that, that you know is going to be benefit yeah. beneficial to the company yeah. as well that and I, to I, the people that are going to work for you I certainly hope so I, I the other reason I'm leaving is that Taylor said there's no more room on my arm I know we so can't go up go. to your bicep <laughs> you know we can't go up to the shoulder okay third question 
I wasn't counting, but that is the third question. No, that was the second <laughs> question. Okay, third question. Tell me one thing that you're like that really sticks up in your mind that you're most proud of in your 19 oh, years. Oh my god, come on. I know it's not come just on. one. Come on. So, so let me just one that sticks out. Let, let me go let me go back to what I was talking about the fact that we were, you know, very much an, an, an organization that pretty much took care of our city and was very very internal uh, to to our community. To what I'm proud of is that um, the impact we've had on policing nationwide. And I'm going to give you an example. So if, if you come down to our museum, and I'm really proud of the museum, uh, the Citizens uh, Police Academy Alumni Association, through your leadership, Chris, and support, uh, has put together an amazing, recognized museum in Arizona for law From enforcement and, and, uh, and the fire department at our police headquarters. And it's open to the public, and it's free, and you can wander the halls. But in one of the rooms, there's a map. And in that room, um, it's, a co it's a conference room, the map of the United States. And on that map, there are buttons in each of the states. And those buttons represent programs were started here in Scottsdale that were adopted and taken over by, or taken from us to, to put in other communities around the country, quite frankly, around the entire continent, because I think there's some in Mexico and Canada, mm -hmm. that we've impacted. We've impacted. Our people here have created programs that have gone international, whether it's our strategic planning process or it's a know your limits, know your limits know, yeah. which helps you know prevent uh, you know drunken dr uh, uh, drug driving from occurring. You know, not letting people get behind the wheel of the car before they get behind the wheel of the car, cause an accident, or get arrested for it, stop it, prevent it from happening. Uh, I, I couldn't be more proud of that. That map is. I told my command staff, that's your resume. You guys created that while you've been here in a leadership role. Be very proud of that. And so that's what I'm most proud of is the things that we've done here for our community and the impact that has had on policing, again, throughout the continent. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree with that since I put the map together. I know it's, on there. <laughs> <laughs> it's got, unfortunately, it's a political year. It's got red, blue, and gray on it. It's got nothing to do with politics. Everybody sees that goes, oh, this is a political chart. But yeah, it's, it's not. Yeah, politics. it's not. It's <laughs> just because we're red, white, and blue. We're Americans. Okay, fourth question. Um, do you have any, like, one thing that you kind of wanted to get done, but, and you knew you were in yeah. pursuit of getting it done, and then this opportunity came, and then you kind of waited. So one thing you wish you could have got done before you left. So that's an easy answer. Uh, as I mentioned before, we've got a number of people leaving at the end of the year. There's going to be a turnover in command staff, and there's going to be a lot of young people coming up young, energetic, talented people coming up. And I was really looking forward to helping develop mentor them and mentor them mm -hmm. through the early stages of their career at the highest levels mm -hmm. within the police department. Right. And, and, uh, and I wasn't planning on leaving because mm -hmm. I said, this is going to be great. I've got the people that are leaving are wonderful people. They've spent their lives here. They've dedicated their, their careers. They've done great jobs. And they've gotten to where we gotten to us through their leadership where we are today. But these new guys were coming in, and I say, guys, I think at this point, the guys are all, they're all men at this point. I don't think I have any girls at this no, point. No, we we'll have some, maybe some uh, from the lower, like lieutenant yes, to sergeant stuff. Yes, yes, and that'll There's, be outstanding. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, so there is going to be some absolutely. movement. Absolutely. Good, good point. So, so my point it was uh, I really wanted to be part of that. And now, I'm, so I regret not being part of that, but it's the kind of regret that I also feel very confident that the people left behind will get the job done. And so I'm really not worried for the community, yeah, worried for the police they're pretty qualified. Department. I mean, we have some really cool commanders. And, and for the audience that doesn't understand, because you and I, are, one of the things that we always tell our guests, don't talk in, like, code and stuff so people don't know what you're talking about. But did I do that? No, I'm just saying. <laughs> I want to I get a little Now I'm the guest. Did I do that? <laughs> okay. No, but I just wanted to get a little deeper. Is, so we have a deputy chief that has actually is had planned on retiring and his five years was up so he had to, he has to leave in december we have a commander that's leaving as well also has served you know over 30 something years so they were planning on mm -hmm. leaving so with three top positions you have a chief a deputy chief a commander so that means there's three more of those and then the lieutenants become commanders right. it's 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 a military uh, style kind of rank so there will be a lot of change yeah. and then i have to move those pictures over just a little <laughs> bit in the chief's office in the museum and be able to have one more photograph on the end of the the chief section in the office but we could do it all right the last well two more questions and then we're going to take a, a trip down memory lane oh fabulous so okay just 
Tell me what you would miss. What are you going to miss the most about Scottsdale? Well, first of all, I'm, I'm still living here, so you know we're retiring to I this mean, community. PD -wise. Okay, yeah. So, so I'm going to miss the people. I mean, I think everybody gives the same answer. You do miss the people. The day-to-day -day job is is wonderful. I love the challenges of the job. I love being the chief. I love being responsible and accountable for all that. I've got lots of committees and organizations I'm part of because of my my being the chief. I'm going to miss those those responsibilities, but you always miss the people the most, and that's what's really important. And so you hope that the friendships and relationships go beyond just the eight hours of work a day together, and you hope that you can maintain those. And, and you've done, and we've done some great things to ensure there's a retiree network to, for support. Uh, but, but life gets complicated. People go with their own ways. And, and so I'll, I'll miss the people the most. And I think that's probably the answer you hear the most from folks because it's not what the work is about, although it's work's important. Mm -hmm. It's always about who you're working with and who you're right. surrounding yourself with and who you spend time with. It and I'm sure, important. like, um, going back to the last question, um, you know, about being not there to, you know, to, you know kind of upsetting about not being able to mentor. I have every... I have every confidence and I know that they're going to be calling you on the phone and asking you questions because you as a, a leader, as a boss, um, have always uh, been so open. Uh, you know, there's you always are cheerful when you come into work and you always um, are up. Y y you're so approachable and uh, you have such a reputation as far as like people just uh, love to come in there and talk to you and they know that you're not going to be like you know like I come in uh, how many times Leia well, there's a bunch of us that will come in and you're in the middle of something and you never ever like give us the feeling that well we are interrupting me or something like that you are just the easiest best boss to ever have worked for um, I've worked for some wonderful chiefs. Chief, Rob, uh, Chief uh, Bartosh was wonderful. He had a lot more like your personality. Chief Hidingsfield, he, he was very staunch. And you might be just, watching this, he, Chris. He, he, it's okay. <laughs> I love you, Chief Hidingsfield. <laughs> just different approaches, but I will say it, it is such a pleasure, and I will miss that a, a lot. Chief that, Chris. you know, you, it doesn't matter your rank. Um, you never have treated people differently because they weren't a commander or, a, you know, they were just a records clerk or a, a community liaison person or a secretary. And that is what I will miss well, the most. <coughs> there's no such thing as just a records clerk. Not to correct you, but that's the way I feel. Everybody had, my house brought up that way. My parents taught me that. Uh, you, everybody's, everybody has a job. Everybody, ha everybody contributes and everybody's worthwhile. You just have to treat people like that. So, but thank you for saying that. I appreciate that. I'm not leaving now. I rescind my. No, I'm just no. teasing. Yeah. <laughs> You're out of here. You're out. <laughs> uh, I could say that to you because you know that that's not what I mean. I, I, it's hard. For, I wrote these thank questions you. down because I knew this was going to be difficult for me, and I don't even want to come to November 30th because we're just gonna, you know, we're just gonna walk away and not even <laughs> say goodbye because I hate goodbyes. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And the last question yep. before we go down memory lane of me being long hair, short hair, fat, <laughs> skinny, whatever, and you look the same. Uh, what advice would you give um, new officers and um, people that might be thinking about coming into um, law enforcement, especially in these very um, hard times that law enforcement has experienced within the last eight months? Uh, what advice would you give them? So I will tell you that this is not an easy job, and, and, and I've been through this before, these, these challenging times, you know, in 45 years, you see things cross cycle from time to time, and you hope that this time uh, so much good comes out of it and cha proper change and support for, for the community and public safety comes through it that we don't have to go through this again. But I've been here before, and I tell people I've, we've experienced this before in our history. The important thing that young people know is when you come into this business, it's a business of, of, of giving. Uh, it's a, it's a, you're, you're in this business to help others, to be there in their worst day, to get them through, to protect them, uh, to be, to be uh, responsible and resourceful and, and accountable. But this is an amazing job. This is amazing. This isn't a job. This is a career. This is, an, this is something that will get under your skin and will, and will basically... Uh, become part of your personality to actually 
deliver service for people in need of service and help people through crisis. <clears throat> and it's so worthwhile intrinsically, it's so worthwhile a career that it's difficult to walk away when the time comes. It really is. I will tell them in Scottsdale, the community is behind you. That the Scottsdale community appreciates, recognizes the challenges, appreciates law enforcement, and will always be behind uh, public safety and police and fire and their, and, their, and, their, um, and their employees that work for the city. They will be there, but you're accountable. You know, they're not going to tolerate foolishness. They expect you to be the best. They expect you to do things right. They expect you to be truthful. Mm -hmm. They expect you to be honest. They expect all those things and, and, to, treat people and to treat people fairly. And, and who can argue that? There's no, there's no argument there. None. They want you to be safe, but they also want you to be, be, be certain to do the right thing. Right. Follow and be laws. accountable. Yes. This is an amazing place to police. There's no play. I've said this time and time again. People, t if you d haven't grown up somewhere else, you don't get it. But if you've been somewhere else and then you come here, you go, wow, this is an amazing place to be in law enforcement. This place is just that good. And the people you work beside throughout city government in public safety are like none other. The mm -hmm. culture is like none other anywhere on the planet. And I've been other places. I've been a national trainer. I'm on national committees. I've been associated with lots of police departments, not working for them, but associated with them. And I will tell you that there's no place like, this, like Scottsdale. So if you're fortunate enough to get through a process, it's a very challenging process mm -hmm. to get through. And all of our civilian employees, and our, <laughs> even our volunteers go through this process. Volunteers go through the same process as if an employee. you're fortunate to get through that process and you're selected, then you're somebody special. And we bring you into this organization and you learn the culture of the Scottsdale PD. And you, like again, like I say, if you've never been anyplace else, you take it for granted. If you've been someplace else, you go, yeah, this place is different. 100%, I say this, and maybe I'll be challenged because I put this out there, but 100% of people I've ever spoken to have left Scottsdale PD and gone somewhere else mm -hmm. for a promotional opportunity, mm -hmm. live closer to home. I had to go home with whatever my family. Re whatever reasons, they may have found that, they're closer to home, they're, they're, they got a promotion, but 100% of the people I've ever talked to or talked to somebody else who's talked to me have said, yeah, I got what I was looking for, but it's not like Scottsdale. And so I would tell a young person today, you want to police in a community with, with challenges that are going on nationally, because mm -hmm. they're going on nationally, mm -hmm. you want to come to Scottsdale. It's where you want to be because you're going to learn how to do things right. And especially with so much turnover, I mean, there are so many agencies that a lot of officers are retiring now at 20 and not waiting much longer. Right. And a lot of them are at the, the stage where they need to um, move on because they cannot police anymore due, due to their, you know, the, the drop and stuff. So we do need qualified candidates. Yeah. And I will tell you, one last thing I'll say is that just yesterday I was out at a Starbucks getting coffee, and I was, all, I was off duty, but I was with a uniform officer at the time, and two citizens tried to buy our coffee. I mean, it's happening. The, the citizens of Scottsdale are demonstrating their support continuously with just comments of thank you for your service right. and coming up and say, we just want to tell you how much we appreciate it. I've had visitors from out of town come up and thank us for our service uh, because they've seen, a, they've seen a difference in law enforcement here. I, so, so our community is very thankful and appreciative, and they do demonstrate that. And we are very appreciative for our community yes, as well. Yes, yes. Oh because yeah. I have reached out to many, many people for, you know, being so supportive of us and sending us cookies <laughs> and cakes, and, but wonderful support yeah. um, through these last yeah. months. Okay, okay so. Yes. Got some videos? Just take, you want to take a little trip down memory lane? Depends on how old I look. <laughs> I think you look the same. <laughs> Depends right. how quickly you'll flip through these pictures. Let's do it Are and we then we'll come back. Okay. Hi, welcome to Behind the Badge. I'm Chief Alan Rod, built with me is Chris Vassala, Community Liaison. Hi, Chris. Hi, everybody. Well, here it is, another month already. I know. Time it's is going really fast. flying. And so we've had uh, our Citizens Academy started its 
I guess, 52nd session, 53rd session? It, w it was the 51st session. 51st session, okay. Right. Which means we've been doing it for 26 years. Yeah, but that's a long cool. time. But we had one special one thing really today. really cool thing today, yes. so you say what it was. Okay, so we had a really cool event today in that we were honoring a nine-year-old young lady by the name of Brianna Mace. Correct. And, and Brianna was in a pool at one of the resorts, mm -hmm. and she noticed a young man about three years old who was wearing water wings mm -hmm. while in the pool. And, uh, and she just, she just had noticed him at that point. And then later on, she noticed that he was with his feet dangling over the edge of the pool. He wasn't wearing his water wings. Mm -hmm. And she had clarity of mind to realize that this young man might be in danger. And eventually, he actually fell into the pool. Right. And she responded immediately and went down to the bottom of the pool and brought him right back up and got him out of the pool into the arms of, of her mom. Correct. Her, his parents were close by. Uh, they checked him over, didn't take any water into his lungs, which was wonderfully, you know, a wonderful outcome. Mm -hmm. uh, they came by and checked him out, and he was okay. And literally, this nine-year-old little girl swimming, paying attention to the people around her, saved this young man's life. I know, it's amazing. And just for her to be that astute, to mm -hmm. know that the child did not have those water wings on the second time that she saw him, I mean, that a future police officer in the making. How are we doing, Chris? We're good. So here it is, it's already November. I know, Which unbelievable. Fast years, it has I gone know, by. Christmas, Christmas decorations, Christmas songs. Uh, they were selling those in October. I know, but. And then before, the, before Halloween, so. It's crazy. So it is crazy. Uh, lots going on, but at the same time, uh, busy season yet ahead of us. So uh, we just finished up our 51st uh, Citizens Academy. Yes. Which means you've been doing it for, almost, well, 26 years, actually, yeah, it's right? Been a Two long a year. Time. Uh, well, you know, like, it's interesting because we've done our show so many times and we've never really kind of had, like, a follow-up on a previous show, mm -hmm. but I thought, wouldn't it be fun to kind of, since we had Special Olympics last um, show, and we talked a little bit about um, maybe donating some money to Coronado and the mm -hmm. cheer squad and everything, so <coughs> I thought, well, SIPAs did vote on it, and um, they were so excited to do it, so I thought we would bring the president back from SIPAs okay. and to talk a little bit about SIPAs is the <laughs> Citizens Police Academy alumni of Scottsdale, and they are graduates of the Citizens Academy right. program. We uh, remember last month uh, we were bragging about how we were exciting, so excited. Yeah, because this month we're going to showcase the new uh, the new studio uh, design, and we're really proud. This we are. A long time in it's coming. amazing. Look at that. Yeah, so digital. Take a look at all this. It's it's really gorgeous. <laughs> and and, uh, th and hats off to the, the crew here. If you guys want to take a picture of, of yourselves, Amanda, <laughs> and the over there in yeah, the studio go box, ahead and show everybody that we have them uh, here. We're very very proud Thank of this. You. I know you guys worked long and hard to get this accomplished, and it's, it's been awesome. many years in the making. And, Quite frankly, this is fitting of star status, so uh, <laughs> thank you for doing this for us. I, I, we probably have to share this with other We do, other though. Shows. We have to share yeah. it with we'll other city employees. Our, we'll let them use it. Yeah, we're the first, though, yeah. so we're special. So congratulations, and we're excited for you guys. How are we doing, Chris? Good, thank you. Good, and here we are in March. Spring, spring training. Spring time, and we've had some really unseasonable weather. Oh, it's beautiful um, already. I feel so bad for all the people back east. And yeah. Chicago and New York, it was freezing. We there. feel bad, but at the same but time. But we're glad we're, we're here. here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Wish you were here with us. Uh, had a very successful parada. It was a wonderful event, beautiful weather, of course. Uh, so that was exciting. And I guess right now we have spring training getting started. Mm -hmm. yeah, yep. So we've got the crowds coming in. We, we host the world champion San Francisco Giants. And so we're excited about that. And we Is that baseball? That no, that's that's baseball. <laughs> well, the Giants do play football, but in a different city. That's right. See? Okay. <laughs> Hi. Welcome to Behind the Badge. I'm Chief Alan Rodbell, the Scottsdale Police Department. With me is uh, Miss Chris Vassal, our community liaison. I like the miss part. Yeah. How are you guys? <laughs> Everybody good? You doing good? Yep. All right. Summer's here. Temperature's off the charts. Oh. Uh, everyone's, everyone's hot and bothered. I'm Chief Alan Rodbell with Scottsdale Police Department. With me is, will you just wave while I was introducing myself? I was waving. <laughs> this is Chris Vassal, can you lay us on? How Hi. are you doing, Chris? Good. How are Good. you doing, Chief? Good, thanks. Good. Well, here it is. It's April. Unbelievable. And it's been hot already. Yeah. It's Golly, been hot. too hot in yeah. March. The majority of our really big events are behind us. You know, the season's still here. People are still visiting, of course, yes. and staying in town. And we have spring break coming up, so we have lots of kids out on the street and lots of activities with families. Yes. Uh, so it's still, we're still a pretty active city. Oh, my goodness. Uh, but, There's uh, so much traffic out there, yeah, I think. Yeah. But we've successfully maneuvered our way through some of the, the biggest events that, that we've had in our season. Of course, Final Four is this month. And so by the time you see this, it may be, it may be uh, 
Do we'll I have a winner. Yeah, we'll have a winner. Hi, welcome to Behind the Badge. I'm Chief Allen Rodville of Scottsdale Police Department, and with me is Miss Chris Basal, our community liaison. Hi, everybody. How are we doing? We're good. We're in the holiday season. This was as red as I can get for Christmas. Well, we can. We so can probably it's kind of pink, it but it's close enough to Christmas. So. Yeah, and, and you probably can't see us, but this is a holiday tie as well. <laughs> yes, we're, exactly. We're, here it is. This is our Christmas attire. This is, this is as good as it gets. <laughs> so, so we uh, we're in Christmas. We're in December already. I know. It's been an amazingly fast year for us, anyway. Yes. Uh, for you all watching twelve of these programs, maybe not so fast, <laughs> but but for us, it's been really quick. Cool <laughs> yes, it and, is. And we do want to thank our. our our folks here in the studio Absolutely. they've been wonderful this year you guys want to turn cameras on each other yeah. no right al can I spin it around <laughs> anyway thank you you guys making a great al, year Tim, it's been a wonderful Alan, year all you guys thank you amanda for all that you do for us yeah. in hd in oh, HD. Yeah. We are. Which the two of us were thrilled to go to yeah, hd we right? are. anyway hey, welcome to behind the badge i'm chief alan rod bell with scottsdale police department with me is miss chris Vassell, can you lay us on Hi, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New Year. Happy Chief. New Year. Yeah, can you believe it? 2018. We do this every year because it we just do. seems to happen so quick. Yeah, I love on the Thursday before we leave, I always say, I'll see you next year. It's yeah. like, like my thing, but yeah. yeah, 2018 already. It's It, it uh, was a fast year. Mm -hmm. It was a very successful year, a very safe year for our community. We had, we had uh, some great events and we set some world records with, with some of our numbers. <laughs> and, yes. and so we're kind of excited about that. This year promises to be equally, if not bigger, a year for us here in the Valley. Mm -hmm. And we're pretty Especially excited Especially with about all it. the freezing cold in the Northeast. Oh my goodness, can you watch that? It's crazy. That? They'll be all coming to Scottsdale. Oh, the airport goodness. will be packed with jets. Yeah, we're enjoying 70s and they're, they're <laughs> they showed pictures <laughs> on news of the fountains that are actually frozen yes. over in the Niagara fountains. Falls is frozen. Unbelievable. It's crazy. Yeah. And, I, and, and many of us, and myself included, come from uh, the Northeast yes. and, and, uh, and Central um, North. And I will tell you that uh, I don't miss that at I all. Don't I don't miss it either. It. You miss it. You t two hours, you go to Flag. You can kick your snow, get back in the car and come yes, down the hill exactly. again. Yes, exactly. Be back in the valley for the sun. Yeah. So welcome. Happy New Year, everybody. I'm Chief Alan Rodbell of the Scottsdale Police Department. With me is Ms. Chris Vassal, our community liaison. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? I'm very hot right now. <laughs> <And you know laughs> These guys are killing me today. <laughs> and here we are in September. Right? Oh, it's yeah. the lights. And I don't have my okay. fan with yeah. me, so I'm great. How yeah. are you? I'm good, thanks. We're good. still in 100 degree temperatures. I thought I maybe know. you were still experiencing the outside. I probably was. I was out there a few minutes before I came up. But yeah, yeah no, it's still, it's getting better, though. Don't you think it's getting better? Uh, it's 105 today. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's getting better. <laughs> yeah, sure. It's psychological. Yeah. It's getting okay. better. I hear you. Before we get started, though, we have a couple things coming up as far as the organization is concerned with uh, with our um, Citizens Academy? Yes, it starts September 6th, but the class is full. It's oh, it's already, full. It's already sat, oh, so wow. okay. you'd have to wait till March, the March okay. uh, through April session. Okay. So once again, if you're interested in, in participating in the Citizens Academy, and it's free, you just you would go online and you would register. Right, uh, or just email me and I can get you the information. And see the cell at scottsdaleaz.gov and I can get you the application and everything. And the department's been doing this for, I guess, almost 28, 29 years now? At Long least time, I was right? teaching, yeah, I was teaching in about 30 years ago when Legault was doing it. So, yeah, we've been doing it a really long time. What was Legault? Was that like a conquistador or something? It's was it Lieutenant Legault. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we call each other by our last name. Oh, okay. So. All right. Yes, and, sorry, and Lieutenant <laughs> Legault. He's still alive, too, so if he's watching, Oh, my goodness. He's one of the people watching. Hi. How I mean, I should have brought my, remember that one time I brought my little Santa hat? And I had a red nose on it. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I missed that. No, we're getting old now. <laughs> we can't remember where we put them. Yeah, we, we anyway, probably yeah. can't. <laughs> can't find them. Hi, everybody. So here it is, holiday season. We yeah. always talk about this, how quick it gets here. We talk about this all how quickly school closes, how quickly it opens. It's, you know. <laughs> life goes by so fast. It does. Haven't paid off Christmas last year. That was my last year joke. It's I still know. true this year. It is uh, true. It's, it's just the way it is. But we're here at the holiday season. And again, we want to tell everybody, have a great and joyous holiday season, regardless of how you celebrate your holiday. Yes. Festivus, right? But however you celebrate your holiday, I uh, hope it's a safe and enjoyable one. Families coming in, lots of cars on the road, lots mm -hmm. of activities, lots of parties. Please be careful. Yep. Get a designated driver. Use one of the services. Uh, take 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 Valley Metro any way you get it there. Right, especially uh, if just, you're going to partake careful. in the festivities. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. With alcohol. Yeah. Let's so. all get through the season. Safely. And have no family fights this year. Let's wish pray that no family fights. That's usually what I get for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. Anyway, anyway uh, so uh, yeah, that'll be a newspaper article. And don't bury the, the kids in the wrapping paper. Yeah. 
Okay. My son learned how to walk actually on Christmas Day. He was turning one in that January of that year. He literally, for survival, stood up and started walking. It was like, okay, we, we, he knew that I got to get out of this. <laughs> I mean, it's either now or never. <laughs> yeah, so it's actually a pretty cool story. That's now awesome. that's 37 years ago. Holy okay, moly. So they get to the truth. Are they going to do something about yeah. it? I mean, there's a lot of questions, especially when you see, you know, Richard Gere and Andy Garcia. And oh my God, now you are dating yourself. Eternal that's a, Affairs. That's a, Go watch that movie. It's a movie from like 1910, but that's just a, it's probably in black and white, but that's just it's a, a, it's a si 90s, silent movie. Like but anyway, uh, so... Uh, <laughs> but, 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 but the point I'm trying to make is on top of that uh, is the fact that and then that movie does kind of like change a little bit of your opinion in the wrong direction in internal yeah, affairs. Yeah, we don't want internal don't, affairs. Don't joke. Yeah. Hi, everybody. How, how are we, you doing? So how are you doing? Hot. It's hot, yeah. Yes. We, you know, we, we had a great May. We have nothing to complain about. We had a great May. And it was relatively cool at, at times June. But it's back. We're well, pay I was very upset because we left for May and went to Italy because we knew it was going to be hot here and it was cold in Italy and it was cold here and I'm, I should have gone in June because well, we, we missed that all purpose. that great weather yeah, in that, May. That was a great plan, actually. Exactly. Was, we did that to you on purpose. Exactly. So what's going on? It's the summer months. Things quiet down a little bit. Kids are out of school. Yeah, so we need to be careful when we drive around a yeah. little bit. Watch the pools, of course, and the kids around the water. Right. Uh, never trust. Uh, and then the measure driving through the streets, be very, very careful because right. they are out there. Yeah. And my granddaughter got one of those, um, what do they call them, uh, I don't know, one of those hoverboards. A and hoverboard? she And she zips all over the place, but the last thing you want to see her is zipping all over the place on the roadway. Yeah, so. exactly, exactly. Yeah. So just keep an eye on them. It's funny because it's six coming July now it's going to be six months till Christmas and you know how those commercials come in and they start singing Christmas songs the kids are going back to school but <laughs> not quite yet we have a couple months so be careful out yeah. there so what's going on with us we have Citizens Academy back in the fall again the fall. So, so people are signing up for it now yes um, yes so actually I have about 20 applications already okay. so, so if you're interested please get it file in. soon hi welcome to behind the badge <laughs> I'm Chief Alan Rodbell of Scottsdale Police Department. With me is Ms. Chris Basal, our community liaison, who's having a moment all by herself. Hi, everybody. How are you today? <laughs> Just in preparation to getting started, we get a little crazy. Yeah. Uh, we do want to talk about something that I think is pretty cool. It's what's happening uh, this month in, in, in the city of Scottsdale with the police department. Mm -hmm. If you kind of focus in on my bicep there, uh, you'll see our pig patch. Uh, this is the first time we've done this. Um, a lot of departments around the country have done it. We didn't create this. But we're doing pink patches on our uniforms mm -hmm. for the month of October to recognize uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. and, the, uh, and the officers have purchased their patches themselves uh, and have had the patches put on their uniforms and be wearing them all this month. And uh, fundraising, first time effort fundraising, uh, cool. we made about $4,000 to I give know. to cancer awareness research. It was totally cool and yeah. totally awesome. Um, and so I know people will be asking the officers, why do you have a pink patch on? But that's the reason why. And we're so proud of the officers for doing this. I mean, it was their idea. They wanted, they, they bought into it fully and people donated money to buy the patch on. But SIPAs <laughs> is the Citizens Police Academy alumni. And those are the folks that joined the organization after uh, coming through Citizens Academy and they want to become um, members of that organization. Yeah. And of course, it's a 5013C and uh, all the money that they raise by selling items and doing uh, all sorts of uh, continuing education. Uh, the money that they raise uh, funds the museum and they do a lot of stuff for our police uh, department with, with their funds. 100% of the uh, money received goes back to PD. Yeah. They're all volunteers. Nobody gets paid for being on the board. Hello everybody. How are you this month? Happy New Year. Right? Happy New Happy Year. New Year yeah. So how are you doing? I'm good. Yeah? Yep. Anything going on? Can't believe it's January already. It's almost over. It's I probably know, this it's is probably February's program. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it's like, it's That's we, true. We, that's how we keep you just kick the you whole just year gave away. Our, you just gave February. our secrets yeah. away. Oh, that's the goodness. Wow. <laughs> so anyway, I say Happy New Year only because it, to me, I, I say Happy New Year in February. It really confuses people. Yeah. I don't I, get it. At least I'm writing 2020. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't, I haven't messed up. I haven't had any problems this year. Before you know it, it's the summer. Before you know it, we're talking about Christmas again. I know. That's the way it works. It's crazy. It Kids is. out of school, all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. But things are good. Okay, so what do we have lined up? We have a Citizens Academy coming up. March. So <laughs> what, what did you think about that? We still look the same. <laughs> oh, look yeah. How, don't we oh, look yeah. young? I think I'm taller, actually. I mean, and that only goes back from, like, 2014. <laughs> I mean, because before that, before we became H. <laughs> What is it, oh, HD? Yeah. Okay, I so you can terrified. see every little wrinkle. I was terrified of that. 
Oh, you yeah. know? And we were on VHS for <laughs> the longest time, so I just kind of went back to 2014 because yeah. it was kind of easy to oh. skim through it. Yeah. And I, I think people need to know that we are YouTube <laughs> stars. Do you know we are on YouTube? Oh, yeah, I think we so. have six hits. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't it hysterical <laughs> that every time we talk, we we, we said the same thing pretty well, much? Like, well, oh, so when's the Citizens Academy? Well, when when's is the Citizens <laughs> Academy, by the way? When is it? <laughs> and that's one of the, that is one of the things with COVID. Of course, we yeah. haven't. We, we won't talk about COVID, but it's one of the things, unfortunately, that happened. Uh, is, is we had to do it with the Citizens Academy this for sure. Year. And I've already got people that want to get in, so I have to give you a name later on about somebody who wants to get in when the time comes because people are asking for it to come back. And I'm, I, and I'm looking forward to when it gets back. Yeah, absolutely, because it's funny because the March class, we went one class, and when this just cut, because yes. we started the first That's week right. you asked in them back March first. of 2020, Fitting. and um, I had like 35 people, yeah. and there was somebody, <laughs> oh, this is like so true, somebody was kind of coughing in the class, and it, it's, COVID was just kind of being out there in the news, and so somebody took me outside, and she goes, that person should not be in her coughing, and I was like, uh, what? I don't know what to do, <laughs> you know, so I was like, she's, it's allergy season. <laughs> I didn't know what to say to this poor girl. Yeah. And so then she must have heard or something. So we walked out in the hallway and I said, do you mind like not coughing? just going to the back of the room or something? And she's like, no, no, that's fine. Do you want me to leave? I'm like, no, I don't want you just to leave. Just face the wall. Just like, so it was like, she, she was so cool about it. Oh. But <clears throat> then we, it, that was it. Yeah. And then I had to call everybody because yeah. then it kind of that one yeah. week, then you saw all these people in China that, I don't know, it was just a, insane. That's um, great. So, I still so you get, have you invite, all those people that want to come back. you got to invite them back first, of course. So we'll, we'll be starting yeah. up in March again. Yeah. Come, if we have to wear masks or not, we're going to be doing that. Speaking so of with let me, masks, let me, yeah. I see even, I have my mask with me, actually. <laughs> I could be like, I need to put this on just, you know, just for something different. No, you only have to put on when you're going into the bank. No. That's my favorite sign. This Please put mask on before you enter a bank. This is driving me crazy. <laughs> the good like, news is the bad guys figure that's a rule. I'm not going to follow the rule. They take the mask off to go in the bank. It's been very helpful I know. for us. I was going to say, <laughs> that used to make me crazy. I'd be walking into Sprouts and I'd see somebody take a bandana <laughs> and literally stick it up. And I'm like, I'm looking for the gun. I'm looking for the gun. It was like so hard to kind of like figure it out. That's how difficult it will be in the future when people try robbing banks with bandanas. People would say they're going to just treat my normal customers <laughs> and dismiss them. <laughs> yeah, here's your cash. Have a nice day. It's you like see this guy coming out of the car and he just like lifts up. <laughs> it is a black bandana and it kind of goes all the way up to here. I was like freaking. I was just like, does he have a gun? Does he have a gun? <laughs> so it's been so hard oh, to kind of figure God. it all out. Oh. And the best part is like when you have your mask on and you're trying to order, when we could, could order food, okay? You're trying to order food. <laughs> Right now. And you're talking. Nobody can hear you. Go, I want a salad. <laughs> right, right, right now, the guys are regretting. They don't have the minute sign. They just give me the minute sign. Two minutes, one minute, 30 Al, seconds. Right Al. now, they're saying, I didn't get the minute I sign. I know. Al's probably going, do you want five and two? <laughs> no, we're just going. All right, let's take a minute and thank them. Okay. All right, come on. So can you guys right. come out from behind, whatever, and yeah, like things going remote control you here? You are you so important you can't leave? Come, come over on, here. Come on, you have to. All right, so you're taking pictures of Al, right? Oh, you're taking pictures of each other. And, and I was going to shoot. I was going to shoot Craig. And let's shoot Amanda back there. Amanda's behind the Al, glass. Craig, Becca, Do you remember the Amanda. episode when before Amanda, Amanda may have been here, but she wasn't in the position she's in, and and Dennis <laughs> forgot the tape, and we had to do the whole program. The second time, and, and the, we second time was the second time was horrible. Second time was horrible because I already asked that question. It was, oh my god! But they didn't put the tape in. I know. Did it stick? That's the, goes, does it stick? Hold on a second. And he goes, I don't think it works. I don't think it's stuck. Do it and the two of us were looking at each other like, we'll never be able to repeat that. That was too spontaneous. Oh my god! Did you get a man in the back room? Did you get her? Stand up get and her. Wave. Stand up and wave. Yeah. Come on. All right, I want to say thank you to you guys and the generations. Well, Al's been with me forever. But I want to thank you guys and the generations of you guys who have been here, uh, Tim and, and, and Dennis. Tim and Dennis. I, 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 anybody else, Al? Who else? We got Al, Craig, Becca, Amanda. That's everybody? 
Yeah, I just want to thank you guys because, quite frankly, you guys have made this extremely pleasurable. I still don't want to ever do this. <laughs> I, I still never want to do this the, the 209 times I've ever done this. But you guys have just been tremendous, and I want to say thank you to you all. Uh, and, the, and the great work you do for the city all the time, not just this program, but all the time. I uh, thank you guys for and that. And we need to also give them credit for also doing a ton of projects for us. Like, yes. they have helped us with Chief Awards of Excellence. Yes. Um, Al's come out and done a museum tour with me. Uh, you guys have been amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. And so, Chief, I guess you can be the closer. <laughs> um, I just want to say thank you so much for allowing me to be your co-host. I've enjoyed it tremendously. And thank you for having so much trust in me. Um, I know you always say you don't like to do this, but you're our star of behind the badge, and we really appreciate all you've done for yeah. the department and Thank for you. the community. Yeah, the worst part of all that is I have to fight the crowds to get in because everybody <laughs> wants to meet me. <laughs> so, get your autograph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, this, is the, this is November, and Thanksgiving is just a week and a half away, and I just want to be thankful uh, and grateful for all the stuff that I've been able to, to do uh, over the course of the last 45 years in law enforcement and, and 19 years here in Scottsdale. Uh, I'm very appreciative of the workforce. They're phenomenal, citywide, just phenomenal. And the police department is just an amazing place in terms of great, dedicated people. And, and so um, I want to thank them. I want to thank city government, who's been extremely supportive through the years. Been, I think, eight or nine different councils, uh, maybe seven different city managers, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, and two mayors now. And so I want to thank them and, 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 and uh, let them know how much I appreciate their support through the years. And then the community, of course, because it isn't just the community that goes through Citizens Academy or, or stops us and says hello. We've got so many community members on our committees, on our boards, on our, on, on our advisory groups mm -hmm. uh, that we just interact with on a regular basis. And they've always been supportive. Uh, they demand and require us to demonstrate excellence, which is one of the things that we do. Uh, and and that's that's that the community gets the kind of law enforcement it deserves. I think Robert right. Kennedy said Get that. And I, this community demands high high um, a high uh, quality public safety service, and and I think we give it to them. And okay. so thank so you. So with that, I'm going to give you my notes as, <laughs> as your, um, you know, was the Emmy. <laughs> Oh, well, thank today. you so much. So, thanks well, so much. You did a great job, and I know thanks. I'm leaving this program in great, capable hands. Yes, we will see what the next person <laughs> wants to do. <laughs> thank you all. Thank thanks, you everybody. everybody. Thank you for having us. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Chris. Bye. Appreciate it.